not, not doing any movement was related to illness and sickness, but doing some movement helps to prevent that. And then excessive movement ended up causing, you know, different sets of problems. Evolutionarily speaking, our bodies are meant to move and cells are meant to function and they're kind of stimulated to function optimally when they're under some sort of kind of chronic stress. And I mean, stress in a positive way, stressing the body to optimize its function. So uh, we can optimize immune function, cardiovascular function, musculoskeletal function, cellular function under conditions of being moderately active. I, I, we, I don't think we've quite found the one preventive action or behavior or pill that's going to prevent any illness from happening to anyone. Um, but we do know that regular physical activity reduces the risk of multiple chronic diseases, including cancers, including prostate cancer, but particularly aggressive prostate cancer. So, you know, it's, this is rather than absolution of risk, it's about reducing risk. It doesn't mean that being physically active can completely prevent someone from getting a chronic illness, but it might mean that they get a lower stage of their illness. It could mean that they were diagnosed later with their illness, so they were able to stave that illness off a little bit longer. And it can also mean better outcomes. There is starting to become you know, mounting evidence for prostate cancer as well as other types of cancer like colorectal cancer and breast cancer that attaining sufficient amounts of physical activity after diagnosis is associated with a reduced risk of cancer-specific mortality, so dying of your cancer, as well as a reduced risk of recurrence of your cancer. So those, so, are, those are associational data, which means they don't prove anything in terms of cause and effect, because it might be that people who are regularly physically active also have healthier diets. It could mean that they get their routine cancer surveillance done in a more timely way. It could mean they have better access to care. This is a lifelong behavior that will take time to cultivate. It, it may take a couple of different exercise settings for someone to find the right one. Don't give up after the first try if, if things don't, don't meet your expectations. And then if anything, we suggest, and this happens sometimes in our classes in men with prostate cancer, they want to go quicker, faster, harder. Let's get there right away. I'm ready, <laughs> which is great. We want that energy and that enthusiasm. And if we just took a slightly slower approach, maybe one where we're still feeling a little antsy and wish we could do a little bit more, it's much more likely that you'll be successful over the long term and get to further improvements because you stayed with something for a long time than trying to go out like gangbusters right away and getting discouraged or, you know, worse yet, have an injury happen. Now's your time to find your um, more preferred kind of exercise that you really want to stick with. It's a difficult time sometimes to start to exercise, but it's not a dangerous time to exercise. Um, because it can be helpful in managing the side effects that come with chemotherapy. So what might need to change is the amount of exercise that someone does, right? When they're undergoing treatment that, you know, they can't, if they were already exercising, maybe they've got to pull back a little bit, either in how many times per week they're exercising and really build their exercise days around their good days when they're going through treatment. or you know, you, people may need to back off on how hard, like, you know, I go out for my walks, but I don't really try to push it anymore because I'm just too tired. So I go at a pace that's comfortable for me or maybe reducing the time. So I can't tolerate 30 minutes anymore, but I go 15 minutes in the morning and I go 15 minutes in the evening, you know, on the days that I can, even that type of a symptom limited, or we call it auto-regulated program when someone's going through treatment can help manage symptoms and help preserve some of their physical capacity. If you're trying to um, train a specific set of muscles or a muscle group that, that can be really focused, there's something in um, the exercise training world called the principle of specificity. <laughs> 
And it means, right, if you're trying to train someone to, to do long piano concerts, then you would specifically train, right, and do maybe squeezing a tennis ball or doing different types of exercises specific to those muscle groups. And the same is true for, you know, a broader range of activities. I think with a lot of physical conditioning programs, we'd look at a general program that then can prepare people to do a variety of different activity. Someone could be better able to do that if they engaged in, say, a total body strengthening program. Because then yes. no matter what you want to do, you've got a little bit more functioning in your various large muscle groups. We always try to promote engaging in activities that mimic functional movements that you use every day. So because isometric exercises are done statically, they don't necessarily help support you when you're doing activity that requires moving. Even if that's moving furniture or, you know, carrying groceries or playing with grandchildren or your own children, that that those require dynamic movements. We call them compound movements. So you're not just doing this, right? You're doing this. And you're using a lot of different muscle groups at the same time. That those types of activities can sometimes better transfer to typical activities versus either like a single muscle group movement or an isometric movement. They're not bad. And if that's what people can do and it's it's easier to reach those types of exercises, then that's a great starting point. There's some evidence from Australia showing that kind of combining doing, you know, 15 minutes of aerobic exercise and 15 minutes of strengthening a few days a week can help improve self-reported sexual functioning. So that men report an improvement in their sexual functioning. 